Here are a number of useful tips we have learnt and used in our labs. We hope you find them useful at getting the most out of the product you've purchased. When working with a solid plate in a detection or activity assay, use a Sharpie marker to outline the wells you have used. This makes it easy to know where you left off if you run additional samples on a different day. When setting up your immunoassay, pipette down the columns of wells to make the most use of the coated plate. This is especially important if you are using a plate washer that washes a complete eight well strip at a time. If you have a 12 tip multi-channel pipette, simply remove four tips to allow you to pet down each column easily. When pipetting, it can be helpful to use a post-it note to line up which wells to use on a partial plate or as a guide for loading plates. When pipetting into clear wells, putting a piece of black paper under the plate can help to make the bottom of the well more visible. We recommend the use of a repeater pipette when adding reagents to the kit. Label a test tube with the correct description or part number and store the tip for reuse. When setting up an assay, take the time to position sample and standard tubes in your test tube rack in a logical way to make them easy to locate when pipetting into your plate wells and reduce the possibility of errors. Some of our standards contain an alcohol aqueous mixture and the pipette tip needs to be flushed repeatedly with the solution to ensure that the headspace in the pipette is filled with the alcohol aqueous vapour. Some of our kits recommend reverse pipetting. In this procedure, the pipette tip is overfilled and then the volume to be dispensed is added to the well by pushing down just to the first pipette stop. It is important that antibody coated plates remain dry while they are being stored before use. After completing one of our assay kits, we recommend that you retain the desk compacts in a dry place. You can then add the extra blue desiccant packs to opened, partially used plates for future assays to help ensure that the plates stay completely dry. Most of our EIA kits utilize strip well plates. After using a kit, it is a good idea to wash out and keep some of the strips. You can color these used wells with a Sharpie and use the retained strips as filler for automated washers in future assays. Temperature is critical for signal development. 
When I insert states from temperature, it means a temperature between 22 and 24 degrees centigrade. Lower temperatures may result in depressed signals. In addition to overall room temperature, the position of the plate during signal development is important. When you are adding TMB or other substrates to plates, or incubating plates for signal development, be aware of the location of heating or air conditioning ducts, windows or drafts. Cold air conditioning blowing onto your plate with TMB substrate will result in lower optical densities. When an assay protocol says to incubate with shaking, set your plate shaker to a speed where the liquid in the wells is moving significantly, but not so much that you risk the liquid sloshing out of the wells. What this setting is will vary depending on your specific type of plate shaker. The exact speed is not important. What matters is adequate mixing of the contents of the wells. If you're using part of, of a plate, we suggest cutting the plate sealer to fit the wells being used and keep the unused part of the plate sealer for a later assay. We are here for you for any questions or needs you might have. We urge all customers to feel free to contact us at any time through our website, by email or by phone.